So finally, you're trying to clean your diet. You cut back on sugar, maybe even added a salad here and there. Then your labs came back with a surprise. Your LDL is still high. You're asking yourself, wait, I thought that was the bad cholesterol. Is my diet even working? Well, today we are breaking down how much your diet really affects LDL and what kind of diet changes actually move the needle. Because not all healthy eating lowers LDL and not all high LDL is from what is on your plate. So let's start with a story. A 42 year old nurse practitioner came to see me last fall. She had gone plant based three months prior. No dairy, no red meat, no junk. She said, Doc, I thought this would help my cholesterol, but my LDL actually went up. How is that possible? That's when we took a deeper dive, not just into her food, but into how LDL works, what really influences it, and why some people need more than just diet to win this battle. So LDL is low density lipoprotein. It carries cholesterol from your liver to your arteries. If you have too much of it, more likely it will get stuck into your artery walls, forming plaques, and this will lead to heart attacks and strokes. LDL is one of the most predictive markers of heart disease. It's causal, not just con correlated to heart diseases. That's proven in genetic studies, statin trials, and imaging. But here's the catch. There are different reasons LDL can be high, some you can control, and some you can't. So let's split them up. Modifiable factors and unmodifiable factors. Modifiable factors you can control. Diet, especially saturated fats, lack of exercise, smoking, alcohol, poor sleep, stress, refined carbs less direct but still contributes. Non-modifiable factors, you know it. Genetics, like, fa like familial hypercholesterolemia. Number two is certain medications like steroids and immunosuppressants. And other endocrine or metabolic disorders like hypothyroidism, kidney and liver disease. So here's the bottom line. For some people, LDL is very sensitive to diet. For others, genes play a much bigger role. Let's get into specifics. What raises LDL? Number one, saturated fats. The biggest player found in red meat, cheese, butter, coconut oil. It actually down-regulates LDL receptors in the liver, so less LDL cleared from the blood. Number two, trans fats still show up in processed foods. It actually raises LDL and lowers HDL, double whammy. Number three, refined carbs and sugar. Doesn't raise LDL directly, but raises small dense LDL and triglyceride. Number four, soluble fiber. That's very good, lowers LDL. Like legumes, oats, apples, actually binds cholesterol in the gut. Number five, plant sterols in nuts, seeds, actually compete with cholesterol for absorption. Number six, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats is actually help lowering LDL when replacing saturated fat. You can find it in avocado, olive oil, and fatty fish. So in summary, what you remove matters just as much what you add. So studies show, number one, portfolio diet, plant-based, high fiber, nuts, and soya. This actually drops LDL by 25 to 30 percent. Number two, Mediterranean diet lowers the LDL by 5 to 15 percent. Number three, we said it, replacing saturated with unsaturated fatty acid. And this will lower down your LDL 8 to 10 percent. But if your LDL is 180 plus due to genetics, diet might only get you down to 150. That's good, but maybe not enough. You have cleaned it up. No cheese, no steaks, but LDL is still high. Here's what I do next. Number one, order Abu B, better predictor than LDL. Number two, check LP little a, genetic risk factor that diet won't touch. 
Number three, look at high sensitivity CRP. Tells you about inflammation. And lastly, consider coronary calcium score. Real imaging of a plaque. For treatment, start with Lydia. Will lower your LDL by 15%. PCS K9 inhibitor like Repata drops LDL by 50 to 60 percent. And Pembidoc acid, newer option, oral, good for statin intolerance. Goal of LDL depends on your risk. If it's general population less than 100, if it's intermediate risk less than 70, if it's high risk or positive LP little a less than 55. Back to my patient. She was eating super clean, but her LDL was 160. We checked AWB, which was high, 105. Her LP little a was normal. Her high sensitivity CRP was 0.6. We started Zidia without any statins. We swapped some of her coconut oil and plant butter for olive oil. We added fiber and flax seeds. Three months later, her LDL dropped down to 98. Her ABUB dropped down to 75. No side effects. Her energy was up and she said, now I know it is not just about the food. It's about the right targets. You should be thinking about LDL if you have a family history of heart disease. Your labs showed elevated LDL even once. You eat clean but still don't feel right. You are working on long-term prevention, not just weight loss. You are serious about peak performance and longevity. Here is the bottom line. Yes, diet affects LDL, especially saturated fat. But for many people, genetics play a huge role. If you, are, if you have done your part, but the numbers don't budge, it's not your fault. There are tools, tests, and treatments that can help. At Dr. Noni's Power Lab, we don't guess. We test smart, treat early, and build a plan that works for your body. Like this video if it helped. Subscribe for more medical breakdowns that make sense. Comment below. Have you tried changing your diet to lower your LDL? What worked and what didn't? Let's fight smarter and give your heart the edge it deserves. Thank you and have a great day.